Some people crave money and power. You see, once you get there, when you're on top, that's a different ball game, fam. We're gonna be running everything again. A whole empire. You love money. You love power. See, all of this is just the first step. I have a plan. But how low are some willing to fall when they lose it all? Oh, she's taking everything. She's gone. As in, she's gone. I'm gonna find them and you're gonna bring them back to me. If you don't, you ain't gonna live to see the weekend. Deshane is a man who'd already done evil things to get to the top. But when everything came crashing down, we saw the worst of him. Deshane, talk to me. What's going on? Get out of my fing business, yeah? Are you listening to me? It's not about the money. So what's it about then? What's it about? Ever since we were kids, bro, together, running up and down these streets, trying to get to the top. What for? To so worth losing your people. Family. Oh, she's taking everything. She's gone. As in, she's gone. Before we embark on his downfall, it's crucial we understand how we got to this place first. Raised in Summerhouse, a ghetto estate in East London, the Shane alongside his right hand Sully worked their way up the ranks. You know who I am, innit? Everyone knows you, the Shane. Sparing you all the details, you realise that this life involved being someone capable of violence in order to find the success within it. I'm sick of that fat f you know? I'm telling you now, we ain't getting nowhere with this guy sitting on top of man like that. He naturally seemed to be a strong leader. Someone who planned things out, someone who typically considered the long-term consequences before carrying out an action, and someone who put money and power above everything else. Shane, you can't get yourself out of this, man. I will. I made enough money. If it ain't me, it ain't me making money from this thing. There's gonna be someone else out there, man. He and Sully went to war with many people along the way, and despite struggling at times, eventually they would come out on top, and the shame would live the life he dreamed of. Uh, this year, you'll be left with 10 million? Mm, that sounds about right. Stepping back from the roads now. By next year, I want to be completely legit. He had millions in the bank, clean money too, using investments and an accountant, he was living in an expensive apartment, completely contrasting his ghetto upbringing and with the woman he thought he loved. Deshane had fulfilled his fantasy and to him, all of the violence and hard work would have been for something. She's taken everything. She's gone. As in, she's gone. Lizzie, life, they've done a runner. I can't get my money. I'm gonna find them and you're gonna bring them back to me. If you don't, you ain't gonna live to see the weekend. I don't think any of us will ever be able to empathise with Deshane in this moment. Every action he had taken in the streets up to this point had been for the money, and now it was all gone. We, as the external viewers, understand the typical rules of the game, that gangsters commit their crimes, make a lot of money, then they end up dead or in jail. The business you're in, the longer you're in it, there's only two ways that it's going to end. You either die or you go down. But in their mind, in this fantasy, they can commit all of these bad deeds, kill people, destroy lives, and only profit from it without much repercussion. And once they've made enough, they can sit back and enjoy the fruits of their labor. But Deshane's fate, in some sort of perspective, can be seen as worse than jail, maybe even worse than death. Imagine feeling like you have everything, whatever everything is to you. Maybe it's a beautiful family, maybe it's your dream career, maybe like Deshane, it's having so much money that you don't have to work anymore. But then in a split second, it gets taken from you. Money and power are everything to Deshane, and it wasn't just lost, it was stolen from him, and the culprits had disappeared. You better have some good news for me, so I need that right now. Lizzie flew last week from Stansted to Dublin. Fuck's sake. Where's my money, bro? And I tell you, it's, it's gone. Let's understand Deshane's prior predicament with the three crucial characters. We have Jeffrey, who was in the real estate business and helped Deshane clean his drug money. We have Live, who, similar to Jeffrey, would help clean the money and act as an accountant for Deshane. And we have Lizzie, who used to be Deshane's business partner, acting as the bridge between the drug supply overseas and Deshane in London. She was also close friends with Live and the wife of Jeffrey. 
However, their relationship was on its way down and they were considering a divorce. If we were to split, how would we divide the assets? Split's still hypothetical, isn't it? The law says 50-50. My side of things brought a lot more to the party than your side of things. I need to know my future's secure. The shame would then go on to cut ties with Lizzie and go straight to the overseas connect himself. Get on a plane and go home. What the f are you talking about? You don't even speak Spanish. Lizzie. You don't even know where you're going. Listen to me carefully. I don't need you. This would spark the beginning of Lizzie's resentment towards the shame. He had cut her out, meaning her value and therefore her income source was gone. I had a business. It was going to be our business until Deshane took it away from us. Now the dots come together. Remember what Lizzie said to Jeffrey? I need to know my future's secure. So we know she's anxious about her financial future. She doesn't love her husband anymore. She hates Deshane. And one of her close friends has access to Deshane's money. Jeffrey also made the mistake of not changing his passwords as soon as the divorce was suggested, as Lizzie has access to his bank accounts too. I know that's his wife and he should trust her, but she's literally a drug supplier. He can never be too safe. So what I'd assume happened is Lizzie approached Live with something along the lines of, Why not just rob them and disappear? To which Live replied, If we're going to do it, we have to do it right. When the time comes, I'll let you know. And then all it took was a threat to put things in motion. Because I'm... I'm coming back tomorrow, and you better have some good news for me. Do you understand? Yeah. That's when Live told Lizzie it was time. Lizzie locked Jeffrey out of his bank accounts, and Live transferred the Shane's money back into her own account, 15 million pounds. So if we try to comprehend the emotion going through the Shane, and the fact he'd gone from enough money to retire back to square one, he only had one man to take out his frustration on. In psychology, this looks similar to the concept of displacement, a defense mechanism involving the transfer of negative feelings from one person or thing to another. The theory is that a person deals with the tension or anxiety associated with negative feelings, such as fear or anger, by releasing them onto a non-threatening target. In this situation, Lizzie and Life have already left the country and there's little chance of finding them. If he could, I'm pretty sure he'd kill them too, but Jeffrey was unfortunately the bearer of bad news in this situation, and despite the typically being a more cold and calculated individual, in this situation, he wasn't able to control his emotions. This was really where the downfall comes into fruition. From the moment he fully comprehended his money wasn't coming back, then murdered Jeffrey and failed to clean up the crime scene, life as he knew it was over. Mentally, he was just in a different place and once again bringing back displacement, he snaps at one of the only people trying to be his people. Look, please, where are you going? Just wait. Just wait! You can talk to me. Tell me what's going on. I'm here. Stay out of my f***ing business, yeah? Shelley and Deshane had met a year or two prior and almost straight away there was a connection. The reason why their relationship would end up working so well was that Shelley was okay with and understood Deshane's line of work as long as it didn't interfere with their personal life too much and put her and her daughter in danger. She was even planning to open up a chain of shops for her nail bar and let Deshane launder his dirty money through the shops. And it was perfect, but despite her not knowing what had just entailed, she had a sixth sense of understanding Deshane was different. His hands were bloody, he was aggressive, he talked down to her, and really and truly, as much as she loved him, it started to scare her, and she realized she'd underestimated how dark Deshane could really be, or she underestimated how much she could tolerate. What's it about? It's not about the money, but you're packing your f***ing stuff! Because I can't live like this! One minute you're in a good mood, next minute you come home with blood on your hands. Do you think I want my daughter around that? If you've watched the original seasons of Top Boy, this relationship storyline might sound familiar with Deshane. Although they met under different circumstances, he found himself in some sort of relationship with a lawyer named Rihanna. She, like Shelley, was his peace and challenged his mind to see the world different. Doesn't it bother you, having no security? I have security. You don't have a property in your name, you don't have a car in your name. And what do you have to show for all your efforts? I'm from Summer House, babe. Where from the day you're born, they tell you you can't have nothing. You know, when I first saw you, I thought, what's he doing on the streets, running a bunch of kids? When I was at school, 
My headmaster took me into his office one day and he told me, you won't accept anyone telling you what to do. You're disrespectful to the teachers. You ain't never gonna achieve anything in life. But ask anyone in Summer House. They know my name. They know who I am. Summer House is a shithole. You're the king of a shithole, Deshane. And she, like Shelley, wanted to aid Deshane's ordeals by introducing him to real estate investors where he could launder his money in. But she, like Shelley again, thought she had what it took to be with a gangster. But when things really got dark, she bailed. You know, I thought we were going somewhere together. We still are. Are you living in some kind of parallel universe? No. I'm living right next to you. You and me. This can't work. Can work. Rihanna. But Shelley ending things would have hurt more because now, Deshane actually had no one. Back then, Deshane had his mum, he had Sully, he had Driss, he was the leader of Summer House, so a relationship was something expendable to him. Now, his mum was dead, Driss was dead, Sully had taken over Summer House and cut Deshane out. He had no one, and all of his earnings had disappeared. Deshane had always placed money over relationships, not just romantic, but any. Unless it benefited him financially, he didn't care. And now, his fingerprints were found at the crime scene of Jeffrey's murder, and he had to run. He was advised by his lawyer to flee the country under a new identity, but because he had no one left, that wasn't an issue to him. So I'll take it you said you goodbyes. I ain't got no one to say goodbye to. But there was one issue. Life on the run is fucking expensive. What am I doing? Give me the fuck. That's why I can't give it to someone. Give me the fuck. Get your hands off me. In a moment of desperation, Deshane robbed his own friend. Sully had half a mil worth of drugs being delivered to him, enough for Deshane to pay for his escape. And he knew the time and place it was coming, so he intercepted it. This led to him having to run for his life from Sully in order to be picked up and taken away and escape for good. But he was caught. You shot me! You robbed me! I didn't have no fing money, did I? I would have given you the money. You were not giving me shit. You fing know. I would have given you the money. You're lying! We were done! Remember? Would Sully have given Deshane the money? A hard question to answer given the circumstances. During the time of their lengthy friendship, partnership, brotherhood, whatever you want to call it, there were definitely barely many periods where if the question was asked, the answer would certainly be yes. But now so much had gone on, the answer becomes distorted. Sully had told Deshane that the two of them need to go their separate ways. That when Sully sells the next batch, they split it 50-50 and that's them done. Although I don't know how much money Sully had exactly, it had to be pretty high considering Deshane had 16 mil and Sully would get the bags of money sent to his boat whilst having barely any overheads. I'd assume he did have a couple mil stashed somewhere. So really and truly, all Deshane had to say was, Sully, I know we're done, but the police are onto me and I have to leave today. Could you just give me my half now and I'll be gone? He didn't even call Sully the whole time he was hiding from police. He didn't even try to see if Sully would help. In the past, he'd had no problem asking for a help in hand when times got rough. Supplies already patterned this setup. I need his 10 bags, down payment. So you've come to me. So it couldn't have just been a pride issue. I think due to everything going on, he just didn't have a straight head, or he overestimated Sully's meaning of being done. So in terms of Sully giving the money, as Kanye would say, I guess we'll never know. In the end, Deshane died a lonely man, running from the inevitable fate of a criminal, death or prison. But he couldn't make it out. <laughs>